Hey, what's up? Um, I couldn't prepare a ton of material for today. We've been in lockdown and I think everyone's motivation has struggled a little bit. So I'm going to be talking about a meme. Um, a meme and its relationship to an entry in this book right here. I know it sounds kind of silly and pointless and a waste of time, but I think the relationship between these two kind of reveals something about photography and the way it operates now as it did almost a hundred years ago. <laughs> anyway, without further ado, here's a meme. I'll give you a bit of time to check it out. So yeah, when I shared it on Instagram, a lot of my photography friends got back to me making fun of the same photographers that Mimi is making fun of, um, as if they have never taken that photo. <laughs> I don't know, I know I have, and it's not something I'm proud of. Um, I never shared it anywhere, and I'm pretty sure I knew it was a cliche before I took it or before I saw the meme. Um, I even tried to find some variations on the theme, which is even sillier. <laughs> some concept, right? <laughs> anyway, there's two sides to this cliche. <clears throat> A, the way the cars are being photographed, and B, the subject matter. We'll talk about the subject matter more in a bit, but you know, there's not a ton necessarily to say about the way they are being photographed. In terms of viewpoint, it's just, it's not like the photographers are getting up on a ladder or are squatting down to get a really low point of view. They're just standing there looking down at the headlamp. So why focus on the headlamp, I guess? The headlamp shows a bit of um, design cues from the bonnet, bumper, rims, etc. Also, it's like an interesting intersection of different materials like chrome, steel, aluminium, rubber, glass, you get the drift, right? Okay, so let's focus on the subject matter, which is kind of related to the entry on the book. Um, why go out and photograph old cars, right? I, I mean, I know, I know, like Soul Later did it in the 50s and 60s, and so did William Eggleston in his time, but these cars in their photos were the models from back then, they were current. It's not like they were going out of the way to photograph design from the past, you know, like some younger people are doing with their pilgrimage to Palm Springs. Recently, I was listening to Jordan Weitzman's interview with Mark McKnight. I really recommend it. I'll actually link it down. Um, they briefly talk about the work of Stephen Shore and how it is often misunderstood and valued for its nostalgic qualities, something he himself, Stephen Shore, um, is really uncomfortable with. The cars in his photographs were very much of their time and they operate as an element within a very carefully composed image. But you know, it just father time kind of turns it into this object of beauty and nostalgic devotion. I thought maybe we can go a little bit deeper into photographic history to see if there's any evidence of this nostalgic exercise from the past. And that's where we, this book came in. Um, it was written by John Sharkovsky and it's called Looking at Photographs. I only bought it because um, Joel Meyerowitz recommended it in a recent interview when he was asked what which books kind of like were pivotal in the way you see photography. Anyway, um, if you're not familiar with Meyerowitz, I really recommend you check out his work. He did some beautiful color street photography from the 70s and he also worked with a large format camera with some amazing portraits. I think he used that camera all the way to the 2000s with his photos of the of the 9-11 aftermath. John Sharkovsky, um, this guy, he was the director of photography for the Museum of Modern Art in New York for 30 years, from the 60s till the 90s. And six years before publishing this book, he was the guy behind the new documents show, showing the work of Diane Arbus, Lee Freelander, and Gary Winogrand. You know, that show is considered by many as a very kind of decisive moment of documentary photography, pun intended. Anyway, he had such a sharp eye, not only for the 
you know, formal properties of photography and technical aspects of photographic making, but also for the historical context in which images were made. Um, there's an entry in the book that kind of relates to the meme. Um, this photograph was taken by Wright Morris in 1947, but printed by Rolf Peterson in 1967. Tchaikovsky opens his entry with a line that is kind of mind-boggling. Quote, by calendar measurement, Wright Morris's photograph of the Ford is now as old as the car itself was when its picture was made. End quote. I know that the statement is easy to understand, maybe, but there's a few years to keep in mind, so I made a little timeline to keep things in perspective. 39 years from when the Ford Model T came out to when the photo was taken. And 26 years from when the photo was taken to when this book was originally published. It's interesting how there's no signs of the 40s in Morris's photograph. His time kind of just disappears in the image and the frame is like a transparent window. <laughs> Uh, it's not a document of its time, that's what I mean. Uh, Tchaikovsky then goes on to talk about the politics of photographing a Ford in a farm in the 40s, which in itself is a kind of interesting meditation, but I think it, it, discussing it might escape the focus of this video. So let's go back to the timeline. The gap between the car and the photo is 39 years. Uh, was there a car from 1982? which is 39 years ago, photographed in the meme. I mean, these two right here kind of sort of look like BMW M3s. <laughs> I think my family had one of those when I was growing up. I'm sure like car connoisseurs must be cringing now because when I looked it up, the M3 is actually not from the... It's actually from the late 80s, not from 82. Uh, but the other cars are much older, so they kind of average themselves out. I think that's... You get my drift, right? I was thinking that maybe as film photographers we should go out and instead of photographing old cars we should just take photos of 2021 Honda Civics and just wait for 30 years, you know, that stuff will age like wine. <laughs> and uh, you might say, why don't you just photograph digital then so that the expression and the subject matter belongs to the same time period. And then I wouldn't know what to say because, I don't know, I just love film and the physicality of it. and the risk it implies and how expensive <laughs> I don't love how expensive it is but you know it just bigger responsibility when taking a film photograph and I think film is good at not only capturing nostalgic subject matter anyway there's another entry in the book that I thought would be kind of relevant to this video this one was taken by Henry Hamilton Bennett it is a landscape with the little man I mentioned in the last video when talking about scale in landscape photography. It was taken in the late 19th century. Sharkovsky talks about how many of these images were actually stereo photographs. So, you know, the photograph has a lot of reflections and it's a 3D image. So, double trouble. Um, oh, actually, for those of you that are not familiar with stereography, it's a type of photography in which the same scene is photographed with two lenses simultaneously, and the distance between the lenses is similar to the distance between our eyes, and we get two different viewpoints. Both images are then presented in a viewer that would trick our brain into a three-dimensional experience. Tchaikovsky doesn't waste his time with like symbolic or mythological interpretations of the images. Instead, he focuses on something quite concrete. He thinks that um, photography offers an interesting riddle with reflections because a lens can focus on the reflective surface and on the subject being reflected simultaneously, which is something our eye cannot do, you know? And this is true. When we look at ourselves in a mirror and the mirror is dirty, it's not like we can focus on the stain and on our face at the same time. Um, but I'm not so sure if that is the reason why this photograph is interesting. Uh, for example, the reflection of the boat and the guy on the boat on the water is a main point of interest and it's not like a stain in a mirror. Not only in terms of subject matter, but just the distance of the boat to our eye, if we were standing where the photographer is, is the same as the reflections to our eyes. So we will still look at them both in focus in real time and 
you know, be entertained by the optical phenomenon. Tchaikovsky actually argues that it is the relation of the island's reflection to the foreground that is a point of interest as it blurs um, the sense of space. And that's a fair point. If this reflection was even sharper, um, it would enhance this illusion. But because it's a bit blurred, um, I'm assuming that this was a long exposure and it's catching some of the surface movement of the water. Um, to my eyes, this is enough to give a sense of depth and paradoxically clarify the way we read the space in the image. These readings will always be burdened by subjectivity, you know, just assessing which parts are important in an image. Anyway, the same page that originally shared the car meme also shared this other meme. And if Tchaikovsky argues that reflections are interesting in the last image because of the deep focus, these images seem interesting for the opposite reason. Um, here, I think what makes them jump out is the contrast between a sharply focused portrait floating in a sea of bokeh. <laughs> bokeh is just a Japanese word for um, out of focus areas or the quality of out of focus areas. Anyway, the history of photography is full of examples of how much in love the medium is with reflections. Even today, reflections are still engaging, as we have seen much more than they ever were in painting, I think, because we know that when a reflection is painted, it is subject to as much interpretation as the rest of the scene. And that's fine, you know, that's one of the beauties of painting, but what makes a reflection interesting is exactly its precision, you know, that we will repeatedly try to challenge and try to understand. So yeah, you know, like a lot of times in paintings, um, reflections were just a small mysterious detail or like a powerful metaphorical statement. <laughs> but in photography, it seems that they are and were like television, their function was perhaps not so much to educate as to divert. Um, hope this was a good episode. Yes, very good episode about cars and reflections. <laughs> um, yeah, I'll prepare something a bit more conclusive for next time. Like the video, subscribe, and I'll see you soon.